Hello, my name is Leslie Mariel Gonzalez, and I'm a perfusion student at Texas Heart Institute. I first got introduced to perfusion as a respiratory therapist, and I was had the ability to actually work on an ECMO team and close, you know, work closely with perfusionists there on staff um, as a primer. So I was very fortunate to have a mentor um, kind of guiding me through it all since respiratory school. I didn't know at the time that perfusion was something that I wanted to pursue, but six years into my respiratory career, I decided that it was gonna be the perfect fit. I decided Texas Heart Institute uh, because it was simply such a well put together program. There was so much history there as far as how cardiothoracic surgery came about and to be able to actually learn from the people who started it all um, just seemed like the best place to be, you know. You don't only get knowledge base, you also get that inspiration from where it all started and to see how people will still continue to want to teach and want to come and work here and want to pursue careers here, it's just amazing. It's an amazing opportunity. I wanted to pursue perfusion education as a student because I have been introduced to a lot of volunteer work in the past. As a respiratory therapist, I was actually a preceptor for respiratory students and I also got really in touch with the school that I had graduated from and would actually lecture their students and get to work with them in the clinic. And I figured doing a mis mission trip was gonna be that much more rewarding with being able to actually learn from others and still teach from what I know. So I first learned about the AMSEC Perfusion Without Borders Scholarship through one of my great mentors and teachers by the name of Deborah Adams. Um, whenever we first started school back in July, she presented this opportunity to us and mentioned how great of a trip she had been on because she had done multiple mission trips and to be able to, you know, see and learn from that, it just seemed like an amazing opportunity for me to actually apply. My name is Deborah Lowry Adams. I'm the program director of the Texas Heart Institute School of Perfusion Technology. I'm a clinical perfusionist at CHI St. Luke's and I love what I do. I trained as a cardiovascular perfusionist in 1983 at the Texas Heart Institute School of Perfusion Technology, and I have been a practicing perfusionist and involved with perfusion education since then, so 37 years, and still loving it. Uh, let's see, my first mission actually uh, was in 1985. I actually went with a cardiothoracic uh, surgeon that was uh, here training under Dr. Cooley, and he was from Bulgaria. And so at that time, that was part of Eastern Europe. And Dr. Cooley arranged for me to go back with Dr. Boyjeff and train his perfusionist for a month. Uh, very um, life-changing experience. After uh, Bulgaria, I traveled to uh, Hong Kong with Dr. Jonathan Ho uh, in, into China, who is still with the Texas Heart Institute in uh, the transplant and research. I've been to Peru uh, with Dr. Novick, and then I started going with Dr. Novick with the Cardiac Alliance on uh, multiple trips to the Middle East. So I've been to Iraq on four trips. I've been to Pakistan several times. I've been to Iran. And I was planning on going to Ecuador uh, before the pandemic. So I've been on several trips and, and plan to do more as time allows. When Leslie uh, talked to me about wanting to apply for the uh, scholarship with AMSEC and her interest in medical missions, I was elated. I'm always excited when I see the passion in a student's eyes that not only do they uh, love perfusion technology from the onset of interview to uh, wanting to give back um, more than just for self-interest. And so you can see it in the twinkle in her eye and her work ethic 
it, it's, um, it's, that's, that's the gift, the privilege that I have is being part of that journey. So I was thrilled and I was so happy when she wanted to do it, I was going to help her even if she didn't get the, the scholarship with AMSECT and so that just was kind of the icing on the cake. You realize that you, you get so much more than you give. Uh, but you learn about your own skill set, uh, you, you learn how to improvise, you learn how to troubleshoot, you learn how to uh, communicate in uh, nonverbal ways because sometimes that isn't the language that you know or they know. And you learn that we're all connected. Perfusion Without uh, Borders started all the way back in uh, 2006 and it was an initiative that was created by Robin Sutton. She was uh, one of our AMSEC members who had the idea of creating a group inside AMSEC that would work similar to uh, Doctors Without Borders. She, uh, she held on to that position, chaired that group for, uh, for several years, and uh, handed it off to, uh, to Jim Rieger, who uh, is now the AMSEC president. And, uh, and then after Jim had chaired that for several years, he handed that uh, off to me. We, uh, we originally envision this as a group that would uh, promote missions activity and it would uh, educate perfusionists on the opportunities that they had globally um, to, to volunteer and to serve uh, outside of their regular work in their local hospitals. Over time the, uh, the purpose of that group has evolved and uh, the strategy that we have been taking is that Everything that we do inside AMSEC, we, we try to have it function within the main mission of, it, uh, of AMSEC. The, uh, the mission of AMSEC is to educate and to support perfusionists around the nation. So what we've realized about uh, Perfusion uh, Without Borders is although uh, it is a great opportunity to be able to uh, serve others who are unserved in um, populations that have uh, very little access to, uh, to healthcare. It's a very uh, noble effort, and it's a, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a real feel-good activity and a charitable deed. But what we've also uh, been aware of is that it's, a, it's an incredible educational opportunity uh, for perfusionists, because many times what happens is that um, when we're walking into uh, to third world countries that don't have a lot of access to, uh, to medical services and, uh, and medical supplies, in reality, it's a lot like stepping back um, two or three decades into the past. Brian is, uh, is a very uh, active member, Brian Forsberg, very active member in our group. And, uh, and he works with the, uh, the, uh, the Novik uh, Global uh, Cardiac Alliance. Um, they have sponsored uh, several of our missions, uh, uh, the, the majority of them, and uh, he's been a very active member, and uh, we've been so grateful for uh, for all of his help. Myself, um, I work with a uh, charity that's uh, that's called Cardio Start, and uh, we don't have quite the uh, the production that uh, the GCA does, but we we go out right now on average uh, between uh, three to five times a year to uh, to different sites. It is a um, I will say that, uh, that, that, that missions itself, the, uh, the entire strategy is, is an evolving project and it's, it's been interesting to see how it has changed over the, uh, the decades. My, uh, my first mission was to uh, Peru and I, I only did one. I, uh, I, I went out, um, it would have been about 15 years ago now, and I went with, uh, with Cardio Start. It was the greatest experience uh, I've ever had. And I, I still got a photo of the uh, the first patient uh, that I worked on, and um, I, I, I remember, and I, I've never really lost track of, of of the feeling that you get from taking the skills that you have, and and then being able to give them to someone for free. We each one of us makes our own decision on what we best think uh, would, would be the ideal uh, student to, uh, to to win that scholarship. And then what we do is we, uh, we, we go through all of the applications, we process our ideas together, and, uh, and then we meet over the, uh, the course of several weeks and uh, make a collaborative decision on who's gonna be the winner of the, uh, the application. I can tell you that um, for myself, what, what I'm often looking for is somebody who really gets the, the concept of, uh, of what the, uh, the award is for. 
and uh, I look a lot at, uh, at previous volunteer activity because somebody who has been volunteering in the past is, is somebody I know has the, uh, the right motivation and, uh, and they're in it for the right reasons. Um, I also look at, uh, at, at somebody who has the maturity to, uh, to realize that they're going to learn something as part of this process that they're going to be able to apply to their uh, career down the road. And, uh, and then I also look for, uh, for somebody who's going to be able to, uh, to have the maturity that they're going to be able to hand that off to their, uh, their peers as well. Of all the committees that you can, you can serve on inside our national society, I, I honestly think this is one of the, the most rewarding um, because at the end of the day, we, we have this great opportunity and we're able to, to hand it off to somebody. The, the one thing we regret is that we can't just hand it off to every one of them because every single year, I, I am so amazed at the, uh, the quality of the, uh, the applicants uh, that, that come out and the applications. That, uh, that we receive, but it is, it's, a, it's a wonderful feeling to work with these students that, that they are so bright and, uh, and, and so motivated. We have uh, we've been able to do this um, uh, 10 times now. Uh, um, 10 years we've been able to, uh, to give out this, uh, the, this scholarship. Uh, at this point, we have given it out to eight different uh, schools uh, of the, uh, the perfusion schools uh, around the nation. Um, those uh, students have um, been able to have their, their mission experience in countries around the world, including Asia, uh, South America, Central America, uh, the Caribbean, uh, Europe. We, we had um, students that went to, uh, to Vietnam, to, uh, to Ecuador a couple of times now, the, uh, the Dominican Republic, uh, Bangalore and in India, uh, Honduras, uh, a couple times to uh, to the Ukraine. We've been all across the globe that they've uh, been able to, uh, to to share that uh, that mission experience, and we've been able to do this with uh, with three different charities. We we were we were so impressed with uh, with Leslie's application, and uh, and I, I just wanted to to mention that um, one of the the, the things that uh, that really stood out to us about uh, our, our most um, uh, recent scholarship winner Leslie Gonzalez was um, she was a she was a first generation American citizen uh, first in her family to uh, to graduate from college uh, she, RT active in a research uh, recipient of many awards everything about her just said uh, motivation and I, I think to me that is what uh, clearly made her uh, so worthy of that uh, of that of that scholarship she was a uh, she was a self motivator that you could see was just pushing herself all the way through and accomplishing so much uh, that made me so proud of her and I was I was so excited to uh, to be able to uh, offer that scholarship to her. She had uh, Le Leslie. There, there was a quote in a uh, in a in a piece that uh, Texas Heart Run uh, ran, and uh, Leslie had said that one of the uh, the most significant accomplishments that uh, that she felt. That, uh, that any person could uh, to have was to make a difference in, uh, in someone's life uh, and then be able to, to she, she, she said the chain of compassion to be able to, uh, to spread that to others. I would say um, what's so impressive about, uh, about Leslie is, uh, is the differences that she, uh, that she made in her own life as well. She, uh, she made things happen for herself and, uh, and, and motivated herself and challenged herself and uh, and I, I think that was just incredible to see. And uh, we were very, very happy to, uh, to see your accomplishments. It's quite interesting. I have gotten um, some questions as to how I came about to winning the scholarship over everyone else. But in reality, I was just presenting myself. Um, I was able to talk about my background, um, how I grew up on a small town border, and not too many people are doing what I'm doing right now. So it's been really amazing. <laughs> I chose Novick Cardiac Alliance um, because my background was in neonates and pediatrics. Um, the fact that this group of very skilled, you know, physicians and surgeons and medical personnel have been established for over a decade was very intriguing. It was very intriguing for me to actually work with this team and actually see 
how well put together they were and how they actually accomplish everything that they do every single year for all these different trips. I was able to go to Medellin, Antioquia, in Colombia. We went to this clinic that was called Clinica Cardiovid, which is actually, from what I came to find out, one of the best hospitals there in Colombia to actually go get heart surgery at. I feel that I accomplished a lot while I was there. Um, not only did I get to learn from the surgeons and the surgeries and you know the staff that was there, but I also got to learn a lot about Colombia itself. I think my absolute favorite was just the atmosphere of how closely everyone works together. The communication in there was amazing. Once I am a practicing perfusionist, I would definitely go on other medical missions. Um, the things that you learn from there, it's just stuff you can't get here. We're, we're, we're so used to using and being able to have the ability to have what we have you know, if you were actually the one living out somewhere in a country where you don't have the resources that we have here and you don't have the ability to have what you have, I'm pretty sure you would want someone to definitely come and help you out in the best way possible. And, you know, the experience that you will get is unforgettable. The people that work there are amazing. They're extremely proud. Um, I feel like it's, it's truly a life lesson, lesson, you know, being able to get the opportunity to go and push yourself and push through these boundaries and actually see that there is more to life than what you think is important. Um, money comes and goes, people come and go, but your time spent, you can't get that back. So it's important to invest it wisely and what you really want to do.